Okay, now we're going to look at the MOS transistor as it heads into saturation. So, in the last lecture, we noted that in the triode region, the drain current of the MOSFET is equal to mu times C ox times the width of the transistor divided by the length times VGS minus VTE times VDS minus VDS squared over 2, uh, this expression here. Now, if we were to plot this, it would be a normal quadratic function. So it would start at 0 as VDS increases. It would reach a peak, and the peak value would occur at VGS minus VT. And then it would go back to 0. Now, we know that this isn't how a transistor really behaves. So what happens at this point? Well, if we look at the drain end of the transistor, and we're to measure the gate to drain voltage, and I should keep this in capital letters, you see, VGD is equal to VGS minus VDS. And what happens at this point is that VGD becomes less than a threshold voltage. So the channel gets pinched off at the drain end. So what really happens is that we increase the voltage, the drain to source voltage, and the current won't change at all because the channel of the transistor is pinched off. So we'll modify our saturation plot. So if we were to look at our modified plot of ID versus VDS, the current's going to go up quadratically until it reaches VGS minus VT, and then it's going to stay flat. Of course, we can identify all the regions of operation. This region is triode. This region is saturation. And of course, where zero current is flowing is cutoff. Now, it's important to note that for a MOS transistor, saturation is good, whereas for a bipolar transistor, saturation is bad. Now similarly, we can plot the current as a function of VGS. We'll plot the square root of the current as a function of VGS versus VGS. And if we were to plot this, we would see that no current flows until VGS is equal to the threshold voltage, and then the current would increase linearly. The square root of the current would increase linearly. Okay, so our, we'll make a slight modification to our current in saturation. The drain current in saturation is equal to one half mu times C ox times W over L times VGS minus VT squared. And this comes from substituting VGS minus VT for VDS in the above equation. Now, oftentimes we call VG, this quantity VGS minus VT the overdrive voltage. Okay, this model does have a few limitations. So the first limitation is, as transistors scale, as we make L smaller, we get what are called short channel effects. And these change the mathematical functioning of the transistor, the physical functioning of the transistor more than anything. So all of these approximations make sense for long channel devices, but they start to become less valid for short channel devices. We mentioned this one earlier, but below VT, current does actually flow. And this is called sub 
threshold current. For the purposes of this class, we'll model it as zero, but you should be aware that this does happen. And finally, we modeled our drain current as being flat in the saturation region. In other words, as we change voltage, the current doesn't change, and this implies an infinite output resistance. But we know that our transistors do have finite output resistance. So we will actually see somewhat of a slope in a real transistor. And the way that we model this is by modifying our current and saturation to include the effect. So we add this 1 plus lambda times VDS term, and lambda is the channel length modulation parameter and it leads to output resistance. And this is a device-dependent uh, parameter. depends on the manufacturing process. So now we have everything that we need to uh, know in order to model the transistor, and we'll look at a model for the transistor in the next uh, set of minutes.